name is Kylie Bishop, and today I will be giving you a brief presentation on the history of henna. Afterwards, it will be followed by a demonstration on how to do certain henna designs, as well as how to roll a henna cone. Henna is actually the Persian name for the plant Lossonia inermis, while Mendi is the Hindu name for the art form. And for the sake of simplicity, I will be referring to this art form as henna throughout this presentation. It is one of the oldest forms of body art dating back to about 7,000 years and is usually used in religious ceremonies or weddings by Hindus, Muslims, Jews, Sikhs, and other religious organizations. Henna is not just used for body art, but also for dyeing hair, nails, leather, silk, and wool. The henna plant contains one of the strongest naturally occurring dyes known to be found in nature, and this is often used to dye nails, which helps to condition the nails and protect from fungal infections such as athlete's foot. So for the making of henna, first the plant's leaves are harvested and dried out. After that, they are finely ground up into a powder, which is then mixed with ingredients such as lemon juice, tea, cloves, and water to create a paste. This newly made paste is then let sit for up to 12 hours before being rolled into a henna cone. When the henna is finished being made, the rest of the plant will be used to make hair dye, shampoo, and conditioner. So, you will need a piece of cellophane about 6 inches by 4 inches with a slight curve in one corner to begin rolling a henna cone. From there, take the unfolded side and begin rolling it about 3 to 6 times until it is all completely wrapped. Then take a piece of tape or two to secure the roll on the sides. After, this cone can be filled with henna and taped off the top to keep the henna from spilling out. As previously mentioned, I will demonstrate this later after the slideshow. Applying henna, it's really based on your own technique that you find it works best for you. However, once the actual henna is on the skin, you can gently dab a sugar lemon mix onto the paste to help the dye adhere to the skin better. The longer the henna is left on the skin, the darker and longer the henna will last on the skin for. After removing henna, water and chemicals, especially such as chlorine, should be avoided for the next 24 hours to ensure the longevity of the tattoo. A bit of a warning about black henna. Natural henna is made by using the leaves of the henna plant, and this method has been used safely for hundreds of years. However, some forms of unnatural henna, such as black henna, uses added chemicals such as PPD, which is used in black hair dye. This type of henna is actually not henna at all, and can leave a permanent scar or allergic reaction on the skin. These types of dangerous hennas can often be found at cheap bead shops or online in kits. Not all shops and kits use black henna, but it is important that you find out what type of henna is being used before you purchase it and allow it to touch your skin. Henna is used in over 60 countries around the world, and most of these countries and cultures have developed their own type of henna designs. For example, Indian designs often fill the whole hand and use designs such as peacocks, lace, brides and grooms, and religious symbols, while Arabic patterns often use bull designs that incorporate floral patterns. The image to the left is an example of an Indian design, while the image to the right is an example of an Arabic design. Some more designs include things such as the Muslim designs, which often refrain from using designs depicting humans or animals. North African ones usually use geometric and hidden symbols, while Somalian designs contain dots and lines that cover the arms and hands. On the left is an example of a Muslim henna design, and on the right is an example of a North African henna design. This is an example of a Somalian henna design. Alright, I will now move on to the demonstration portion where we will learn how to roll a henna cone and apply henna. So, this area right here, this would be good to practice like little humps or bumps in your designs. So, you're going to start at this end. And this one is really good for practicing um, the thickness of each line so that you don't end up merging two different designs together. So then that first line is done, and now I'm going to move on to these thicker parts. And so th with this one, it's just using 
more pressure throughout the entire thing. So just more pressure and stop. More pressure, stop. And there you go. So something that I think is slightly more difficult, or I guess as difficult as the swirl, are these lines right here. So these you can call darts, I think they're most commonly referred to as, but really I don't think that anybody's going to care if you call them something else. So the way that these ones are going to work is that you're going to start from this top portion, the thickest portion, and apply the most pressure, let that fill up a little bit, and then what I do is I just slowly loosen up on the pressure like that. And you could start from the bottom and try to get thicker, but I find that it's just not going to give you a nice point like that does, because instead you're going to wind up with something like this, which again, it's, it's not awful, but it's just not quite as thin as that line is. And so you can practice that a couple of times, making the lines go thinner, thinner. All right, and now we'll do it in reverse order, which is just the same thing, just upside down. There you go. So this next one is going to be another good example of trying to prevent your lines from merging because of how thin this white space is compared to the black line. So you could start it like this and do it on two separate lines, but I find that doesn't quite look as good or it's just going to take more time. And so what I like to do is I like to just go up one and then bring it back down, all in one go. Okay, now the reason that we skip these lines up here is because we have an example of some lines down here, so there's no real reason to go back over them again. So you're just going to apply same amount of pressure, just a gentle one, but depending on the design that you're doing, this will differ. Just go down until you filled in the lines. Those are really easy. So next up we have some dots, which, uh, can you guess what word I'm going to use? I'm going to use pressure, yes. You're going to differ the amount of pressure that you're using for these dots in order to get the desired um, size of it. So with this bigger one, you're going to want to apply more pressure and then just pull up and you're done. So a little bit less, pull up and done, pull up, done, 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 done. There you go. So next up, we have these sort of dots right here, these little bumps. These are actually quite difficult to do, I think. I still struggle with them sometimes, um, even though I've been doing this for quite a few years. But I think that just getting them all the same height is quite difficult. So don't, don't get upset if you struggle for this one or any of them, for a matter of fact. Just keep practicing. I was really bad when I first started, and I like to think that I'm pretty good now, so really don't get frustrated if it's not great when you start. So for these ones, what I typically do is I don't stop and do individual ones like I just did. I just keep going and following the design All the way through until now I'm done. Moving on to the demonstration portion, you can get out your henna and pens and paper or whatever you brought to follow along with this portion. And if you didn't bring anything, that's fine, you can just watch. So the guide that I'm using is one that you can easily find online just by searching practice henna guides and you can print that out. And by covering it in this plastic protector, you can easily apply henna and then just wipe it off and try it again without it actually staining. So we're going to start with these swirls up here. We can just ignore these lines. We'll get to those later. And these lines are pretty thin, so you don't really want to apply too much pressure variation because you want it all to stay the same thickness. But with, say, these lines up here, you notice how it's thicker at some ends than the others and that's where we will apply certain types of pressure. So here you just want to very thinly or gently follow this line.
And if you always, uh, if you just miss a spot, then you can always go back and just fill it in. And the lighter your pressure, the thinner the line is going to come out on the henna. So we can do the same thing, but just in another direction now. Now these swirls are actually very common in henna designs. So if you are planning on doing some henna yourself, it is very good to get accustomed to these. Next up, we're going to do these lines with the little ball at the end. So this you're just going to follow up with a thin line again. And then at the end, instead of stopping and then picking up again, which you could do, it doesn't quite make a difference besides just the speed of the process, you can just go up and then apply more pressure at the top and then create the ball. All right, on to the next one. This is where the pressure comes in the most. So you're going to use a thin amount of pressure on the tip of the henna cone. And then as you get towards this top part, you're going to add some more pressure and then less pressure and then no pressure. So this one wasn't completely filled in, as you can see from the top. And it's good if you could get it on the first try. But if you can't, you can just go back in and apply the same amount of pressure as before and just fill it in. All right, next we're going to do a swirl that goes in one more time than these ones do. So just start at the end, follow it around, all same pressure with this one. You're going to hear that word a lot. And then the little ball at the end. And again, you can just fix up the line if it doesn't come out on the first go. Some common design that I see with a lot of flowers is that you won't just get a little circle in the center you'll also get this little swirl, which is starting to incorporate the swirl designs that we did up here, the circles that we did down here, and then as well as these little petals in these areas. So with this one, you could just do one of these circles, but instead of not connecting the lines, you could connect them to create this pattern. So we go around and swirl and there you go and then just pedal 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 and done so the next step is incorporating these pedal designs with these humps with these swirls and these circles and also these lines, which we didn't focus on too much because they're lines not too difficult, I think. So we're going to do the same thing with the swirl first. So circle, swirl. Now we're going to do some humps. Some really tiny ones, so watch that pressure. You don't want too much or else it's all going to blend together. Right. And now we're going to do some petals. So one petal, two petals, three, four, and five. And now we're going to move on to the line. So with this one, you just want to streak up, 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 so on, and so forth. There you go. So now we are going to do these darts again with a little bit more practice that we finish the flowers because these ones are also super common in designs. I find that floral designs as well as swirls and darts are the most common out of any design that you'll find. So just like we did before, start at the thickest point, add a lot of pressure, and then slowly remove your pressure and then pull off. So we're going to do these without having the lines touch. A lot of pressure, no pressure. 
A lot of pressure, no pressure, good. A lot of pressure, no pressure, a lot of pressure, no pressure. And again, um, if you're using a pen, I know that you're not going to be able to get these sort of um, thicker lines, but it's okay as long as you're just following along and getting the motions in. I should have mentioned this in the beginning. I didn't, but <laughs> you can just go on on your own and practice this for as long as you want, and you can keep this in mind when you're doing that, is that if you just have a pen, you don't have any henna handy, you can just hold onto the pen and squeeze it a little bit tighter when you're pretending that you are adding more pressure, and then just release a little bit when you're not. All right, back onto these ones. So, thicker pressure, thin, thicker line, thin. And with these ones, we're adding a little bit of a curve to the line. So, thicker, curve, thin. There you go. These ones are sort of like hugging each other. We're going to make sure that they don't touch again. So, thicker and pull. Thicker and pull. Thicker and pull. Okay, so that's just about all for this guide. If you really wanted to go back with these lines, you just pull, 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 dot, dot, etc. Take a break for whatever reason and stop the um, sort of flow of henna halfway through. It's fine. You might need to do that to get more henna towards the bottom of your cone or wipe off your cone tip or whatever reason. It's okay. So these ones are quite similar to that one, so I'm just going to skip over. And this one is another example of not merging your lines. So it's just the same thing that we did up here. You're just going to do the line, fluent motion, I don't stop. Let's just do it all in one go. Okay. And so then, next you're going to add a little dot in between and try to not have the lines merge. So pressure, pull up, pressure, pull up, pressure, pull up. Okay. So, this again is a really good example of not having your lines merge because you need to do multiple layers in order for it to come out right. So, you're going to do pressure, pull up. And then circles, I find, are just kind of difficult to do, no matter what medium of art you're using. So just the same amount of pressure throughout, and then you can fill in the line again. Same amount of pressure throughout, try not to merge the lines. And there you go. So we're going to skip over these, because it's the same thing here. And this one sort of looks like a little flower design, so we'll do that because it seems like we're getting into this section. So some flowers you'll find are just dots in a row together. And that's sort of what this one is, or at least what I picture it as. So you're going to do a dot, pull up, dot, pull up, dot, pull up, and dot, pull up. And the thing about these flowers is that you're working with the black and white space or um, negative space. and here, you want to try to leave that white space in the center while creating a design that comes out to look pretty floral with the black space. All right, we can do that again. This one is less of a flower, more of just dots in like a diamond position, but pretty simple. A little pressure, pull up. Next, we've got some actual flower designs, which we're going to start with this smaller one and continue throughout. So this is sort of like these designs, how we, we had a fluid motion, and we'll just follow that throughout the entire thing. If you need to stop, that's fine, but again, just doing the same thing that we did up here. So that's one petal, two petals, three petals, done. Next up, we have this one, which incorporates a little um, circle into the middle part, which if I knew anything about flowers, I could tell you what that is called, but I don't. So <laughs> it's going to be called the circle part for now. So I usually do the circle first 
in a separate um, flow of motion. Then I just stop the circle. And then I will do a single range of motion for all the petals, like I did in that one. So, one petal, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, Next part, we are going to roll the henna cone. What you're going to need is a little piece of cellophane um, that's cut into a little triangle piece like this, and some tape. And then also just spare henna. This one's already rolled into a cone, but sometimes if you're running low on henna, you can sort of push the henna down into the tip. And this one I wouldn't um, put into a new henna cone yet. But if it was like down to maybe here or so, then it would be a good idea to merge this with another cone, which is where the rolling would come into play. So you're going to put your finger right here and hold this straight piece down. A lot of people think that the point of the cone is going to end up here, but it's, it's not. It's going to just roll around in a sort of semicircle motion and end right about here. So once you have your finger here, you're going to fold this piece up. You can crease that a little bit. And then start folding once this piece is creased up this way. So we currently have a triangle shape that sort of stops right here and ends up being folded like that. Now that's the part when I was learning that I had a lot of trouble with because I just couldn't visually grasp it, which is why I'm going back and forth with this, so that you guys won't run into the same problems. So then once you're in that spot, I usually move my finger over to the point that I folded it to, which will also determine the size of the cone. So you could do it up here or just down here. It really doesn't matter. It'll just change the size a little bit. So I then move this over to hold it in place, and then you just start rolling. much better. I don't know if you guys can see that as well. I chose a really bad color for the cellophane because it's white and clear, but I think that you get the point. No pun intended. So then from this point, what you're going to do is take a little piece of tape and then just apply that around the opening. You can apply it to however many spots you need, but usually one or two pieces right here can hold it in place. And then you can take this thicker part, once you've applied henna from, let's say, a smaller tube, if it was down to here, you could put that in and squeeze it. Or sometimes what I'll do is I will push this henna at the tip up the cone, and then I'll cut it so that you get a bigger hole and it goes into the next cone faster. But I'm not going to do that because, again, this henna is not quite ready for that. So you're pushing it in to this little opening. Okay, you're done with that. Then you're going to sort of get all the henna down towards this part of the cone. And then you can fold this top part off however it needs to be folded. It doesn't quite matter as long as it's closed. And then you can... Take this off. And there you go. A henna cone. So you can practice that as many times as you need. Um, the cellophane will obviously become folded, but you could just unwrap it and do it again if you're just practicing. So there you go. I think that this just about ends the presentation. Thank you so much for tuning in.